about the gospel, Paul says in Romans chapter 1, he says this in the word of God. Romans chapter 1, he says, I am a debtor, both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much as in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. Why was he not ashamed of the gospel? Because number one, he believed that there is a God. The Bible says God created the universe. You've only two choices. Either a mind created the world or no mind created the world. Which is more logical? A mind or no mind? If there is no mind, how can mind be created? You need mind to create mind. So there had to be a, a mind behind the universe. And God is behind the universe. Secondly,
There's no guilt if there's nobody to judge us. That's why we have a God. He's going to judge. Now if He judged you, you and I would go to hell. So what He did, what He did is He stepped in your place and went to hell for you. The lie that you did, the sleeping around that you did, the taking of drugs that you did, the anger that you did, when Jesus died on that cross, He was dying for you. He was never angry or did anything wrong, but yet He was dying on that cross for you. There's a story of a girl, she became a prostitute. She went to Puerto Rico and left home. Her mom was broken hearted and went to find her in Puerto Rico, couldn't find her. So she left pictures of herself all over Puerto Rico to find a daughter. She couldn't find a daughter, she came home. Well, the daughter was with a client because she was a prostitute. She comes down the stairs of a hotel, goes into a toilet, sees a picture of her mom. That's my mom. She looks at her mom, she turns around and she sees her mom's handwriting. You know what it said? I don't care what you have done, come home. That's what God says to you today. He knows I've done it. He knows the mistakes you've made. I've made mistakes. But God says, I don't care, come home. The best place for you is home with your God, to know that God is with you. It's no good being in a flat somewhere, smoking wacky wacky off your head. It's no good being in a nightclub, taking acid, being off your head. I've done it. I've done it. It's no good carrying a knife with you, thinking you're a hard man. It's no good these things you want to be with God. But how do you get with God? To know that Jesus died on that cross for you. He died on that cross. When Jesus hung on that cross, He hung on that cross for you. Listen, if there is no God, then we just eat, we drink, we have a good laugh, and we die, and that is it. If there is no God, let us enjoy ourselves, have a laugh, we die, and that's it. But if there is a God, He says to you and me, turn to Him, repent, and believe on Him, and trust on Him. There's a camera. I dumb behind him. And trust on Him and believe on Him. Jesus is the only way, truth, and the life. There's nobody else. I respect Muslims. I respect Buddhists. I respect any other beliefs. But Jesus died and rose again. Nobody else did that. Muhammad, I respect, but he died and he's dead. Buddha died, is dead. Charles Darwin died, is dead. But Jesus died and rose again. Now if he says, I am the resurrection and the life, he trumps Muhammad, Buddha, and everybody else. Now you might say, Jay, that's arrogant. How do you know that your belief is the right belief? Listen, I respect every belief. But in the old days, in the time of the 1940s and 50s and 60s, there was what is called truth. That somebody could have truth. Today, we believe in postmodernism, where we say there is no truth. Well, that's blatantly wrong. We know there's truth. We know there's a right and wrong. So God calls us today to believe in Him and trust in Him as, as, as your Lord and Savior. Will you do that today? What if you died tonight? Where would you be? You just go in the crowd and that's it? What if you died tonight? Will you be with God? And if you're with God, what will he say? He said, Jay, I'll, when I meet God, I'll just say I've done my best. God doesn't say that. God says this. He says this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's faith in Him. Belief in Him, not in yourself. We're not believing. Are yeah, you Muslims, guys? Do you read the Quran? Does the Quran teach you to read the Bible? If you read Surah 6, 34, it says, My word cannot change. That is in direct reference to all the prophets. They tried to change the prophets. God said, or oh, your word said, it says, My word cannot change. It's in relation to all the prophets. The word of God cannot change according to the Quran. And yet, you say the Bible's changed. How can you say the Bible's changed when the Quran says the Bible's not changed? You've got to be consistent. Jesus Christ came and died on that cross as the Savior. In the Quran, it says Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah came to die for our sin. He came to die on that cross for us today. 
When he hung on that cross, he came to do it for you and me. He said, Jay, it's just your opinion. You've got no evidence. Okay? I'll give you my evidence. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 was written 800 years before Jesus. Now, who is this? Isaiah 53. Who is this? Who wrote this? Who's this about? Isaiah 53. The Jews are told not to read this. If they read it, they're told it's, uh, it, it's about Israel. Now, who is this about? 800 years before Jesus, Isaiah wrote this. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. That is a direct prophecy of Jesus coming. 800 years before he came, it was prophesied that he would come. There are 300 prophecies in the Old Testament. Over 300 prophecies about Jesus. Where he would be born, who would be betray him, who would cast lots for his garments, all these things. My Muslim friends, do you read your Quran? Surah yeah, 6, 34, what does it say, guys? You tell me. It says, my word cannot change. I'm recording it, by the way. My word cannot change. Would you agree with that? God's word cannot change. If you look at the context, it's about prophets. Prophets, it's saying the prophets cannot change. And if you cannot change the prophets' word, what's this book about? The prophets. The Bible. Ah, no, 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 no. You said it's been changed. But it says in your Quran, my word cannot change. Because it got with it. No, it's on about the prophets. If you read Surah 6, it's not prophet, it's prophet plural. How do you know that? Have you read the Quran? Have you read the context? What is the context of Surah 6? If you read the whole of Surah 6, it's about the prophets. It's about the prophets, guys. It's not about prophet, prophets. Okay, give me evidence the Bible's changed. You're going against the Quran. You're going out, you're going against, you're going against the Quran. You're going against the Quran. Well, let, let's put that aside. The oldest, the oldest Bible in Turkey. What text is that? There's cheese, there's cheese on the moon. I can make a claim. There's cheese on the moon. Everybody, there's cheese on the moon. I can make a claim, but I've got to back it up. Back it up, yeah? What's this text? He's telling me there's a text. I'm respecting you, I'm respecting you. I'm going down to Hyde Park on, on the ninth month I'm going down to preach, yeah? So I respect that. I'm only out no, of no, the no idea. Yeah? Absolutely. Right, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll ask, how many manuscripts do we have of the New Testament? We have 5,000 copies of the New Testament, and then we have 20,000 more copies of the copies, copies, copies. Yeah? So we have about 24, 25,000 copies. How many copies, ancient copies of the Quran do we have? How many copies of the Quran do we have? No, this, this, is, this, this is the problem, you see. Muslims are not trained. This is the problem. This is the problem with Muslims. And I respect you. You're not trained. You're not trained in textual criticism. Let, let me explain. Yeah? 
And he said, we cannot have this because people are, are, are arguing with each other. So he made one Quran. And what did he do then? Tell everybody what he did. What did Uthman do? Tell everybody. He put the Quran. He burned the Quran. He burned the Quran. He burned the Quran. He burned the Quran. Do you know what that means when he burned the Quran? It means he burned the, he burned the evidence. So when you say that the Bible's changed, we have burned of it. We have burned the evidence. You can go check it. But they burned the evidence. So we can't check it. Yeah? So, ah, ah. Okay. So you said it's been memorized. If it's been memorized and passed on from generation to generation, and it's been preserved that way, why did Uthman make what correct? No, no, he argued. He, 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 the point that he was saying is this that there was different ways to pronounce it. So we need to make one Quran. So oral tradition doesn't prove it. Well, well, when did they make it? Um, I don't know. Which came first, the Quran and the Bible? Which came first, the Quran and the Bible? Genesis chapter 1. Let me, let me explain. Let me explain. Let me explain. 
Let me come back to that point. You said about forgiveness. Yeah. Listen, if, to, listen if, to the politics. If, no, no. If, if, if you sin, if you sin, it's so, so, but there is forgiveness because of the cross of Jesus. Christ. What power does Jesus have to say, Jesus, no, God, that's the first thing. Okay. He's acting like God, that's so wrong. Okay, you use in the cross, you use the word for sign. Teaches uh, teach. Can I go one text? What would you say? I have yeah, it. No. Ah, here. Here what you say. Explain to them what I said. If I was to say that the Quran. Just, just move that there. Okay. This is where YouTube is. not even an engineer. If I say that the Quran has got, it's got errors in it, yeah, and false in it, what would you say to me? You would say, get the cult to context together. Yeah. So when you're quoting verses about Jesus is my God, you quote it one or two verses, you've got to take all the verses. And there are lots of verses. Why would he say I can't tell them with the power of God if he's yeah, he's like he said, you've got to take all the verses. The, the, the word Messiah, listen, listen by me. The word Messiah is used in the Quran. And the word Messiah is used in, in the Bible about Jesus. Yeah. And the word Messiah means anointed one. Yeah. Now if you look at the Old Testament, it talks about the kings right. will speak on behalf of God, they will do things for God. And they'll look into the final coming of the Messiah, who will bring in the kingdom of God. So everything that God does, the Messiah does, it says that in the Old Testament, and it says that in the last of Jesus. So that's why he's What Bible is that? What text? No, no, my friend. We, we have... We, we have the... the we, which one? We have, we have the Dead Sea Scroll. What, what, what's that one? We have the... We have the New Testament. We have the... It's in Jesus. What was it called? What's the text called? Every text. Every ancient text. It says there. It's that. 40 million handwritten gold letter tone penned in Jesus' native Aramaic life. Gold letters means that would be that would be way after the New Testament copy of gold letters. Right? Yeah. 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 Much later, actually. Yeah. One of the other five hundred years ago. There were no gold letters. Copies of the years. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you're not, you're not engaging with the scholarship. Nobody in the academic world, anywhere, with any respect whatsoever, who's got respect in the academic world, believes that Jesus did not die on the cross. The only people that believe that he did not die on the cross in the academic world are cranks, atheist cranks, atheist cranks, Listen, atheist friends, we were not accepted in the academic world in the of Jesus. Bar none, the vast majority, 99% of academic scholars in historical Jesus believe he died on the cross. I'll give you an example. Dominic Cross, who was a skeptic, was a believing God, said that Jesus dying on the cross is one of the most well attested facts in ancient history. But also. It has multiple attestations. Someone died, yeah? It's not a fact. Knowledge, it's been passed out for about years. Multiple attestation, enemy attestation gives you good and strong evidence. We're not, this is not the Quran. This is not the Are you an atheist? Are you an agnostic? Yeah, I've been an atheist. I'm not, 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 I'm